Hi, welcome to our movie review. Today we are going to see a bad movie called Sadar Udom. Star cast, Vicky Kaushal, Banata Sandhu, Sean Scott, Stephen Hogan, Amal Parishar, Andrew Havill, and so on. Directed by, Shujit Sarkar. Total runtime around, 162 minutes. The film welcomes the viewers with some known trivia of the infamous 1919 Jallianwala Bagh massacre, which in a way is Sarkar's intentional way of putting, this is all you must be knowing about the incident, wait let me show things you wouldn't have even imagined in your wildest dreams. Panning the storyline from 1919 to 1940, Sarkar does the honor of introducing the story of a revolutionary whose act was termed as insanity by Mahatma Gandhi and the British wanted to get rid of him for the revengeful rebellion he brought with himself. For the unverse, over a thousand men, women and children were shot dead by Reginald Dyer Andrew Havill on 13 April 1919 in Jallianwala Bagh on the orders of Michael O'Dwyer who was the Lieutenant Governor of Punjab back then. Many historians believe this incident was the, this is it, moment of India as a country, 1931 saw British government in India releasing Shah Singh, one of many aliases of Sadar Udham Singh, five years after he was arrested for possessing seditious material and illegal arms. During his sentence, and even before that, Sadar Udham treated Bhagat Singh, played by Amal Parishar, as his guru, following his ideology of attaining freedom. Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev and Rajguru were hanged by Brits in the same year Sadar Udham was released from jail. With an already grown rage of the Jallianwala Bagh massacre, now Udham had nowhere left to go so he decided to move to England where he slyly worked for Michael O'Dwyer, Sean Scott, eventually assassinating him. The story majorly highlights the details of what happened to Sadar Udham after he was arrested for Dwyer's murder, and why he took 21 years to take his revenge. Now we are entering into script analysis. Udham Singh is described as a man born with so little, who wanted to be so much more, by Anita Anand in her book The Patient Assassin based on the martyr's life. Sir Carl's first attempt at the period genre is not just a detailed one but it suffuses curiously penned drama in every phase of the film. With this film, Sarkar creates a niche for himself because we as an industry haven't seen a war drama like this before and I'll add a logical explanation as to why I'm making such a bold statement. Much like Shahid Bhagat Singh, we here deal with the story of an individual who was hanged by the British government for his fight for freedom. Even though Udham considered Bhagat Singh as his guru and they both welcomed death in the same way, Sarkar focuses on the stark differences they both had in walking the path towards it. Udham Singh laid low for 21 years before killing Dwyer and one of the three major phases of this movie showcases what took him so long to pull the trigger. It raises an important question of why Udham Singh didn't make it to the freedom-fighting stories we have heard, told as Bhagat Singh did. It took 34 years, hanged in 1940, for us, as a country, to even gather his mortal remains, received in 1974, from the UK. Chubb Hindu Bhattacharya, Ritesh Shah's screenplay flourishes in the last hour of the film which resides as a lump in your throat designing one of the most heartbreaking, gut-wrenching sequences in the history of cinema. The Jallianwala Bagh massacre sequence evinces Avik Mukhopadhyay's visually unblemished cinematography. From climbing over a hill of dead bodies, humans crumbling humans, the struggle of being alive amid the barbarous firing by Dyer and his team, Mukhopadhyay's camera coupled with Bhattacharya, Shah's screenplay transfers the pain from the past to you. It throws you in the middle of the Tanakhic Baisakhi morning where over a thousand British reported just 379 deaths to avoid bad press of our countrymen lost the lives because they decided to protest for the freedom. Shantanu Moita's uninterrupted background score shines in the second half for obvious reasons you'll realize after watching. Thankfully, there's not a single song making it a tougher feat to achieve for Moitra, and he does. All said and done, Shujit Sarkar makes a poignant point by plotting a heroic tale without making it just about the hero, focusing on his ideology of destroying imperialism to attain freedom using his ways. It not just informs you about a tragedy but also gives you a closure that is neither black nor white. And finally, my opinion on this is. It's a feel-good movie with four stars.